Lectures on Homeopathic Philosophy Lecture 1 Homeopathy asserts that there are principles which govern the practice of medicine. It may be said that up till the time of Henneman, no principles of medicine were recognized. And even at this day, in the writing and action of the old school, there is a complete acknowledgement that no principles exist. The old school declares that the practice of medicine depends entirely upon experience, upon what can be found out by giving medicines to the sick, their shifting matters and theories, and rapid discoveries and abandonment of the same fully attest the sincerity of their acknowledgement and declarations. Homeopathy leaves allopathy at this point, and so in this manner the great division between the two schools is affected. That there are principles, homeopathy affirms. The old school denies the existence of principles and with apparent reason looking at the matter from the standpoint of their practice and matters. They deal only with ultimates, they absorb only result of disease and either deny or have no knowledge of the real nature of man, what he is, where he came from, what his qualities is in sickness or in health. They say nothing about man except in connection with his tissue, they characterize the changes in the tissue as the disease and all there is of the disease, its beginning and its end. In effect, they proclaim disease to be something that exists without a cause. They accept nothing but what can be felt with the fingers and seen with the eyes or otherwise observed through the senses, aided by improved instrument. The finger is aided by microscope to an elongated point and the microscopic pathological results of disease are noted and considered to be the beginning and the ending. That is, results without anything prior to them. That is a summary of allopathic teaching as to the nature of sickness, but homeopathy perceives that there is something prior to this result. Every science teaches and every investigation of a scientific character proves that everything which exists does so because of something prior to it. Only in this way we can trace cause and effect in a series from beginning to end and back again from the end to the beginning. By this means we arrive at a state in which we do not assume but in which we know. The first paragraph of Organon will be understood by an inexperienced observer to mean one thing and by a true and experienced homeopath to mean another. Paragraph 1. The physician's high and only mission is to restore the sick to health, to cure as it is termed. No controversy will arise or from a superficial reading of this statement, and until Henneman's hidden meaning of the word sick is fully brought to view, the physician of any school will assent the idea that one person will entertain as to the meaning of the word sick will be different at times from that which another will entertain. So long as it remains a matter of opinion, there will be differences of opinion. Therefore, the homeopathy must abandon the mere expressions of opinion. Allopathy rests on individual opinion and allopath says that the science of medicine is based on the consensus of opinion, but that is an unworthy and unstable foundation for the science of curing the sick. It will never be possible to establish a rational system of therapeutics until we reason from facts as they are and not as they sometimes appear. Facts as they appear are expressed in the opinions of men, but facts as they are, are facts and truth from which doctrines are evolved and formulated, which will interpret and unlock the kingdoms of nature in the realm of sickness or health. Therefore, beware of the opinion of men in science. Henneman has given us principles which we can study and advance upon. It is law that governs the world and not matters of opinion or hypothesis. We must begin by having a respect for law for we have no starting point unless unless we base our propositions on law so as long as we recognize man's statement we are in a state of change for man and hypothesis change 
let us acknowledge authority the true homeopath when he speaks of the sick knows who it is that is sick whereas the allopath does not know the latter things the house which the man lives in which is being torn down expresses all there is of sickness in other words that the tissue changes which are only results of disease are all that there is of a sick man the homeopath observes wonderful changes resulting from potentized medicine and being compelled to reflect he sees that crude drugs cannot heal the sick and that what changes they do effect are not real but only apparent modern philosophy physiology has no vital doctrines in its teaching and therefore no basis to work upon the doctrine of the vital force is not admitted by the teachers of philosophy and therefore the homeopath sees that true physiology is not yet taught for without the vital force without simple substances without the internal as well as external there can be no cause and no relation between cause and effect now what is meant by the sick it is a man that is sick and to be restored to health not his body not the tissue you will find many people who will say i am sick they will enumerate pages of symptoms pages of suffering they look sick but they tell you I have been to the most eminent positions. I have had my chest examined. I have been to the neurologist. I have been to the cardiac specialist and had my heart examined. The eye specialist has examined my eye. I have been to gynecologist gyne, 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 and have had my uterus examined, says the woman. I have been physically examined from head to foot and that they tell me I am not sick, I have no disease. Many a time have I heard this story after getting three or four pages of symptoms. What does it mean? It is true, if that state progresses, there will be evidence of sickness, that is, evidences which the pathologist may discover by his physical examination. But at present the patient is not sick, says the learned doctor. But what do all these symptoms mean? I do not sleep at night, I have pain and aches, my bowel don't move. Oh, well, you have constipation. That is the first thing that has been diagnosed. But do all these things exist without a cause? It would seem from one opinion that the constipation is the disease per se, but from another opinion it would appear to be the cause of disease. The diagnosis is made to apply to one as much as to the other, but this is the character of vagaries, so common to the old school whims. These symptoms but are the language of nature, talking out as it were and showing as clearly as the daylight the internal nature of the sick man or woman. If this state progresses, the lungs break down, the doctor says, oh, now you have consumption or a great change appear in the liver and he says oh now you have petty degeneration of the liver or albumin appears in the urine and he tells the patient now i am able to name your disease you have some one of the forms of bright disease it is nonsense to say that prior to the localization of disease the patient is not sick does it not seem clear that this patient has been sick and very sick even from childhood? Under traditional matters, it is necessary that a diagnosis be made before the matters. It is necessary that diagnosis be made before the treatment can be settled, but in the most cases the diagnosis cannot be made until the results of disease have rendered the patient incurable. Again, take the nervous child. It has wild dreams twitching, restless sleep, nervous excitement, hysterical manifestation, but if we examine all the organs of the body, we will find nothing the matter with them. This sickness, however, which is present if allowed to go uncured, will in 20 or 30 years result in tissue change. 
the organ will become affected and then it will be said that the body is diseased but the individual has been sick from the beginning it is a question whether we will start out consider the results of disease or begin at the beginning with the cause if we have material ideas of disease we will have material ideas of the means of cure if we believe an organ is sick and alone constitute the disease we must feel that if we could remove the organ we would cure the patient a man has a necrotic condition of the hand then if we believe that only the hand is sick we would think we had cured the patient by removing his hand say the hand is cancerous according to this idea it is cancerous in itself and from itself and seeing he would later die from the cancer of his hand we would conscientiously remove the hand from so cured the patient pour an eruption on the skin we would use local means to stimulate the function of the skin and make it heal and believing the eruption had no cause behind it we would consciously think we had cured the patient but this is reductio ad absurdum for nothing exists without a cause the organs are not the man the man is prior to the organs and first to last is the order of sickness as well as order of cure from man to his organs and not from the organs to the man well then who is the sick man the tissues could not become sick unless something prior to them had been deranged and so made them sick what is there of this man that can be called the internal man what is that there that can be removed so that the whole that is physical may be left behind we say that man dies but he leaves his body behind we dissect the body and find all his organ everything that we know by the senses belong to physical man everything that we can feel with the fingers and see with the eyes he leaves behind the real sick man is prior to the sick body and we must conclude that sick man must be somewhere in that proportion which is not left behind that which is carried away is primary and that which is left behind is ultimate we say the man feels sees tastes hears he thinks and he lives but these are only outward manifestations of thinking and living the man wills and understands the caterer does not will and does not understand then what then that which takes its departure is that which knows and wills it is that which can be changed and is prior to the body the combination of these two the will and the understanding constitute man conjoint they make life and activity they manufacture the body and cause all things of the body with the will and understanding operating in order we have a healthy man it is not our purpose to go behind the will and understanding to go prior to this it is enough to say that they, they were created then man is the will and the understanding and the house which he lives in is his body we must to be scientific homeopaths recognize that the muscles the nerves the ligaments and the other parts of man's frame are picture and manifest to the intelligent physician the internal man both the dead and the living body are to be considered not from the body to the life but from the life to the body if you were describe if you were to describe the difference between two human faces their character and everything you observe by their action you would describing you would be describing scarcely more than the will the will is expressed in the face its result is implanted on the countenance have you ever studied the face of an individual who has grown up a murderer or a villain of some sort is there no difference between his face and that of one who has the will to do good to live uprightly 
go down into the lowest parts of our great city and study the paces of these people. These people are night prowlers. They are up late at night studying villainy. If we inquire into it, we will see that their affections are of that kind. They have the stamp upon their faces. They have evil affection and an evil face. The countenance then is expressive of the heart. Allopathic pathology recognizes nothing but man's body. Yet one can easily confuse the allopath by asking him what man's thought is, what man is. The homeopath must master this thing before he can perceive the nature of the cause of disease and before he can understand what cure is. It is sole duty of the physician to heal the sick. It is not his sole duty to heal the results of sickness but the sickness itself and when the man himself has been restored to health there will be restored harmony in the tissue and in the activities. Then sole duty of physician is to put in order the interior of economy that is the will and understanding conjoined. Tissue changes are of the body and are the result of disease. They are not the disease. Henneman once said, There are no diseases but sick people. From which it is clear that Henneman understood that the diseases, so called example, a bright disease, liver disease, etc., were but the grosser form of disease results, viz., appearance of disease. There is first disorder of government, and this proceeds from within outward until we have pathological changes in the tissue. If the practice of medicine today, the idea of government is not found and the tissue changes only are taken into account, the man who considers disease results to be the disease itself and accepts to do away with these are diseases is insane. It is an insanity in medicine, an insanity that has grown out of a milder forms of mental disorder in science, crazy whims. The bacteria are results of disease. In the course of time, we will be able to show perfectly that microscopical little fellows are not the disease cause, but they come after. They are scavengers accompanying the disease and that they are perfectly harmless in every respect. They are the outcome of the disease, are present wherever the disease is and by the microscope it has been discovered that every pathological result had its corresponding bacteria. The old school considered these the cause. But we will be able to show that disease cause is much more subtle than anything that can be shown by a microscope. We will be able to show you a process of reasoning step by step the folly of hunting for disease caused by the implements of senses. In a note, Henneman says, the physician's mission is not however to construct so-called system by intervening empty speculation and hypothesis concerning the internal essential nature of the vital processes and the mode in which disease originates in the invisible interior of the organism, etc. We know that in the present day, people are perfectly satisfied if they can find the nature of the disease. Disease they are supposed to have. An idea clogged in some wonderful technicality. An old Irishman walked into the clinic one day and after giving his symptoms said, Doctor, what is the matter with me? The physician answered, Why, you have Nux Bomica, that being his remedy, whereupon the old woman said, the whereupon the old man said, Well, I did think I had some wonderful disease or other. That is the outgrowth of the old patient folly of naming sickness. Except in a few acute diseases, 
no diagnosis can be made and no diagnosis need be made except that the patient is sick the more one thinks of the name of the disease so called the more one is be clouded in the search for a remedy for then the mind is only upon the result of disease and not upon the image expressed in symptoms a patient of 25 years of age with gravest inheritance with 20 pages of symptoms and with only symptoms to furnish an image of sickness is perfectly curable if treated in time after being treated there will be no pathological results he will go on to old age without any tissue destruction but that patient if not cured at early age will take on disease results in accordance with the circumstances of his life and his inheritance if he is chimney sweep he will be subject to the disease peculiar to chimney sweeps if she is a housemaid she will be subject to disease peculiar to housemaid etc that patient has the same disease he had when he was born this array of symptoms represent the same state before the pathological condition has been formed as after and it is true if he has liver disease or brain disease or any of the many tissue changes that they call disease you must go back procure these very symptoms before you can make a prescription prescribing for the result of disease cause changes in the result result of disease but not in the sickness except to hurry its progress we will see peculiarities running through families in the beginning is this primary state which is present only by signs and symptoms and the whole family needs the same remedy or a cognate of that remedy but in one member of the family the condition run to cancer in another to ptosis etc but all form the same common foundation this fundamental condition which underlies the diseases of the human race must be understood without the knowledge of this it will be impossible to understand the acute miasmatic diseases which will be considered later it will be seen that some person are susceptible to one thing and some to other if an epidemic comes upon the land only a few come down with it why are some protected and why do others take it these things must be settled by the doctrines of homeopathy idiosyncrasies must be accounted for many physicians waste their time searching after the things that make their patients sick the sick man will be made sick under every circumstances whereas healthy man could live in a lazaretto it is not principles business of a physician to be hunting in the river and the cellars and examining the food we eat for the cause of disease it his duty to hunt out the symptoms of the sickness until a remedy is found that cover the disorder that remedy which will produce on healthy men similar symptoms is the master of the situation is the necessary antidote will overcome the sickness restore the will and understanding to order and cure the patient to get at the real nature of human economy and to lead up from the sickness opens out a field for investigation in a more scientific way sickness can be learned by the study or proving of drugs upon the healthy economy hanneman made use of the information thus obtained when he stated that the mind is the key to the man the symptoms of mind have been found by all his followers to be the most important symptoms in the remedy and in a sickness man consists in what he thinks and what he loves and there is nothing else in man if these two grand parts of man the will and the misunderstanding be separated it means insanity disorder death all medicines operate upon the will and understanding first sometimes extens- extensively on board affecting man in his ability to think or to will and ultimately upon the tissues 
the functions and sensation. In the study of Aram, we find the affection are most disturbed by that drug. Man's highest possible love in love is for his life. Aram so destroys this that he does not love his life, he will commit suicide. Argentinum, on the other hand, so destroys man's understanding that he is no longer rational. His memory is entirely ruined. So with every pro proved drug in the materia medica, we see them affecting first man's mind and proceeding from the mind to the physical economy, to the outermost, to the skin, the hair, the nail. If medicines are not thus studied, you will have no knowledge of them that you can carry with you. The Materia Medica has been established upon this basis. Sickness must therefore be examined by a true scrutiny of the elements that make up morbid changes that exist in the likeliness of drug symptoms to the extent that drugs improving upon healthy men have brought out symptoms on animal. Ultimates, must we study sickness with the hope of adjusting remedies to sickness in man, understanding the law of similars, ultimate symptoms, function symptoms, sensorium symptoms, and mind symptoms are all useful and none should be overlooked. The idea of sickness in man must be formed from the idea of sickness perceived in our materia medica. As we perceive the nature of sickness in a drug image, so must we perceive the nature of sickness in a human being to be healed. Therefore, our idea of pathology must be adjusted to such a materia medica as we possess, and it must be discovered wherein these are similar in order to heal the sick. The totality of symptoms written out carefully is all that we know of the internal nature of sickness. Then the proper administration of similar remedy will constitute the art of healing. Right.